So in a recent video on this channel, I explained how Claude Code's skills are going to absolutely replace all of these drag and drop platforms like NADN and Make.com because they're just so much more powerful, especially when we're building out customized workflows for our AI agency clients. And in that video, I introduced my framework that allowed us to turn Claude Code into this insane automation engine called the Double Eye Framework, which helps our agents when they run into errors which is a massive improvement than drag and drop platforms that we've been using in the past. But after releasing that video, I got a lot of questions from people in the No Code Academy asking about how to actually set up your coding agents to run 24 seven, even when we're not on the computer so that it can complete tasks whenever we want. And that's why I'm making this video today because I'm gonna show you the two best methods to hosting all of your Claude Code agents and their skills in the best ways possible. By the end of this video, we're gonna actually set up your first Claude Code agent that can run 24 seven, and it's not even gonna cost you a dollar. Now this video is also very important for my upcoming Agentic Operating Systems Masterclass. So even though this might be a little bit more boring than the other tutorials that I show you, it's actually quite crucial that you learn what I'm about to show you. So. If you guys are looking to learn the most cutting edge AI solutions, you've come to the right place. Like this video, subscribe, and let's dive right in. The two best ways that you guys can run your Cloud Code agents 24 seven is either through the Mac OS agents trigger, which runs your agents locally. And the second option is to run it in a cloud infrastructure from this new company called Modal, which has created the cheapest and most scalable servers for our AI agentic workflows. And this is not a sponsored video. I am using both of these options. And so what I'm also gonna be breaking down today, guys, is where each option actually comes into play and where the value for each option actually lies. So first things first though, let's just break down option number one. All right guys, so option number one is the Mac OS agents triggers setup. So the first thing that I wanna speak about guys is actually how the Apple Macintosh operating system has this thing called an agents trigger. And the agents trigger allows us to essentially run any agent or any workflow we want on a schedule or on a cron job. And this happens locally directly on our machine. So if you guys were to go out and get your own Mac mini computer, for example, your agents will just run on triggers 24 seven, depending on how you set them up. And all of this is possible because of my II framework that I developed in that previous video that I spoke about in the intro, where we have the II framework that separates the information and the implementation into two different folders. The information folder explains all of the instructions, the memory, the past errors, and the actual plan that we want an agent to go and execute. Like scraping a bunch of leads and then turning those leads into a CRM database and then turning that CRM database into an email automation. That's an example of what would be inside of the information MD. But then the implementation Python scripts is actually sitting directly inside of your Mac mini environment where the agents will then use the information and the scripts to actually execute any task we want. And we get this done by giving the agent access to any API key that is needed. So if we needed to scrape leads, for example, we would be scraping leads on Appify, and then we would be sending those leads to Google Sheets, and then we would be sending emails on instantly. So this workflow would need three API keys to work, for example. And the reason why this is a massive upgrade from platforms like N8N is because whenever the agent runs into an error, it actually recursively improves itself and rewrites the information MD file again and again and again until it actually perfects the workflow that we're looking for. Now, let me explain to you guys the exact way that I use option number one and that is for my computer use agentic workflows. Now in my next video before the agentic operating systems masterclass, I'm gonna show you guys how computer use agents are going to literally change everything. But computer use agents need their own screen and they also need access to certain platforms. Like they need to be signed into my Instagram to go and send DMs. They need to access my Shopify to process uh, orders, for example. And these are actually going to work through a dummy HDMI where we give our Mac mini the ability to render its own screen. And in that way, guys, we, we have literally built multiple workflows that have 
literally changed the game for my agency and for software in general because now we can have computer use agents running on a script, completing end-to-end -end tasks with its own computer, and it's all running locally. So we're not actually using any API keys for this. We're not spending any tokens on this. This is all running locally, saving us costs and doing things that was previously not even possible. So whenever I need to use a computer use agentic workflow, this is my setup where I put it into a Mac mini environment and then I run it. So we're gonna make more videos about this as we go on, but I needed to explain this first implementation because it's extremely crucial for where AI is going in 2026. So let's talk about option number two. So option number two is the Modal cloud server. Now the Modal cloud server is actually pretty crazy because previously having to host our workflows in like a virtual private server like DigitalOcean or AWS were quite expensive. But the crazy thing about Modal and I've been using it for over a month now is it literally doesn't cost anything. And I haven't even used more than one penny to run all of my agentic workflows through this cloud server. And again, it uses the II framework to create consistent outputs from our workflows. So we're giving the information MD folders to this thing called a modal volume. And inside of the modal volume, we can just store information that the agent will go and read before executing any script. Once we have that in there, we could also push in all of our implementation Python scripts, which have the actual code to execute any task that we want. We could then set these up on a cron schedule, just like how we did in option number one. And these agents will just be churning out day in, day out on a weekly schedule, monthly schedule, or even hourly. Another cool thing about Modal guys is that your agents can run concurrently for up to 60 minutes, even on the free plan. And so chances are your workflows won't even surpass 60 minutes in execution time or runtime. And so just using the free plan, I'm pretty sure you can get away with months and months of work before even having to pay. Now the difference between option one and number and option number two guys is that the Modal server can't use the HDMI screen, for example, because this is gonna be running locally. Option one runs locally. And so because of that, we can actually use the same IP address that we're already using for all of our social providers, for example. So if I needed to sign into Instagram, there will be no issues with option number one because Instagram will detect just a normal login from the same IP address that I normally log in on Instagram. But if I was trying to do this type of workflow in Modal, then chances are your account will get flagged because it'll be like, why are you signing in in Los Angeles if the server is based in Los Angeles, for example. And so that is the key differences. Now let's talk about why I use Modal or where I use Modal. So option number two is for when I use all of my scheduled agents. Now these agents may perform tasks on an hourly basis, daily basis, weekly basis. An example of this could be consistently checking my Gmail and responding to inbound emails. Another one could be checking my social analytics and how my content is performing on a day in day out basis so I can see how each day is performing compared to one another and I can learn from my content that I'm producing and I don't have to actually track any of the analytics because the agent does it every single day. <laughs> so a couple more benefits here guys and we're gonna show you this because we're gonna set up our first modal agents together here is that it's literally gonna take us one prompt to set this up and I'm gonna show you how. The other thing is, as I spoke about earlier, it's extremely scalable. The agents themselves can perform tasks for literally as long as you can imagine. Let's go ahead and let's set up our first 24 seven Claude code agent in modal together. So in the no code Academy, I've given you guys the agentic OS code base, which I'm going to be continuously improving on for the entire year of 2026. And we're going to go in there. We're going to grab that code base. We're going to open it up in cursor. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to get started with this modal agent. All right guys, so here's Agentic OS. I'm just gonna go into here. I'm gonna use this template. We're gonna create a brand new repository. And inside of this repository is already like 15 Agentic workflows. We're just gonna set one of them up together today. Now, the next thing I did guys was signed up to modal. So this is the modal dashboard. When you first sign up, you're gonna get $5 worth of credits and you're gonna to have to give the coding agent this install instruction. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna fork the project into cursor and we're going to then send in that prompt. Once you fork the code base, you're gonna see the two folders that actually matter, which is the implementation folder 
and the instruction folder for the II framework. So this first agent that we're gonna set up here, guys, is just going to be called the database management agent. And this agent is going to check our database for our AI operating system, and it'll just give us a review of the operating system and what's in the database, all right? So what you have to do is give this agent access to literally any database that you're using right now. So give it the API keys or the database URL that you're using. In my case, I use Supabase. So I'm gonna give this coding agent the Supabase API keys. All right guys, so the prompt just says, this is my database credentials, add it to the .env and let me know when it's set up. And so we needed to do this because we need to give our code base access to any API keys that is needed to run any agentic workflow that we want. And so this example only needs the database to be set up. And once this database is set up, it'll let us know about that. And then we'll move on to directly setting up an agent in Modal. All right, guys. So we're building an agent from scratch here. And we're going to say, cool, I want you to use the II framework to build out the database management checker agent. This agent will just simply review the database once a day. So agent then goes, I understand the II framework now. Let me create the information file and the implementation script for the database management checker agent. And in the file discovery in the code base, we could actually see those two files being added. So we have the database management checker. And then for the Python scripts, we have the database management checker script right here being written out in real time. All right, so now the agent has pulled in all of the database tables and what's inside of them, which is pretty awesome. And this is actually for one of my clients that we're creating content on behalf of. So it's already gonna have a little bit of daily analytics, a little bit of post analytics, and all that fun stuff for this agent to go and review. The agent now says it is ready to run daily and it says you can set it up with a cron job or modal scheduler whenever you're ready. So now we can actually close out of cursor and we can head into Modal. And we're gonna copy this code snippet and we're gonna tell our coding agent that it needs to install these dependencies. So immediately after it installs, it'll open up this OAuth page where you want to select the workspace that you've just created and you wanna authorize the ability for your computer to actually talk to the Modal servers. And so we're going to authorize that. On the left-hand side, we can see that the web authentication has finished and the token has been written to the code base. So now, our code base has access to this Modal server. And so now what I would recommend is before pushing any of your agentic workflows to a server like Modal, you wanna make sure that it's working correctly. And so in this example, I just wanna make sure that, you know, it's gonna tell us some of the data that's in our database. So we're just going to get the agent to run the script that it wrote out. And I just wanna make sure that it's at least working somewhat decently. And then I'll finish this tutorial up for you guys. And so now the agent is actually running the API call to check the database tables. And so we can actually just pop this out and review it. And so this is actually what's happening in real time. We could see that only a couple of the tables have real data. So about you know seven tables here have real data. And so we just wanna see what the agent can discover from this data. And so now what you're seeing is the actual power of the II framework. After it ran that test, the agent then says, excellent, now I have a clear picture of your database. Let me update the agent to generate a comprehensive re written report with insights. All right, here we go. My insights on your database, what I found. This is a social media management platform. Your database powers what appears to be a social media tool for the M77 product line, which is a skincare brand. And then it breaks down the followers from each social platform. It tells us about the contact activity. So we've already posted you know, seven posts with a total of 87 views. So it's telling us we're averaging 12.4 views per post. That is really cool. And so now let's say that I was satisfied with how this workflow is operating and the report that it's generating. Now I'm just going to tell it to post this into Modal. And the agent also reported that it created a database for this report. So the report is going to be put into that database table every single day on our behalf at a set time. And so now I'm gonna say, great, push this agentic workflow to Modal and set it up to run daily at 9 p.m. Eastern. 
So now what's happening is the database secret API keys are being passed to the modal functions inside of the secret folder. And we can see there that it actually passed the Superbase database API keys. And then now it's going to end up passing the agent. And there we go. So the agent is now live inside of modal. And it's saying that it's going to run at 2 a.m. UTC or 9 p.m. Eastern time. And it's just going to tell us that it, that it did that, right? And so the last step that we need to do to make sure that this is all working is to just run a test agentic workflow on Modal. Once we can see that working, then we're completely set up. So all I'm saying here, guys, is cool. Test this workflow on Modal and I'll send that in. And so if we go inside of our apps and we look at the app, the stopped apps, AKA the apps that we were testing manually, we could see that it did run successfully with this one call. Now we can open this up and we can actually see what executed. So we can see that it ran the entire database API call. It then returned back the tables that had data it, it created a report that was generated by the database management checker agent, and then it stored its report in the database table that it created for this workflow. So now we have set up our first end-to-end -end cloud code agent that runs whenever you want. And the crazy thing is, guys, that $5 credits that you start with, I promise will last you a very long time. If I were to switch into my account that I'm actually using for my agentic operating system. And we can see we have a bunch of different agents that are running and the cost hasn't exceeded a penny. So have fun building. This is the future of AI. So you guys are really early and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.